Alright, hello everyone. So, welcome. I'm going to start with a tutorial on the basics of Maya just in case you guys forget. So, remember in week 1, we start doing some simple exercises like creating boxes or creating simple objects within Maya. And we learn how to move around within Maya. So, if you forget, just a refresher. For you to move around in Maya, you have three ways. Uh, firstly, you can rotate around the scene over here. So you can press and hold alternate and left click and drag. You can move around the scene over here. Maybe I should put a cube over here so you can see a bit better. So here I have a cube over here and if I want to move around the cube, I press alt, left click and hold and I can rotate around it. Now for me to zoom in, to see the cube a bit closer, I can use my mouse wheel and zoom in or zoom out or I can just press and hold alternate and right click I can also zoom in this way just drag inside or out to zoom in or zoom out now lastly we can actually move side to side and in order to do that you just press and hold alternate and the middle mouse click to move from side to side so you can move around zoom in zoom out either with your right click or your mouse wheel and you can move side to side right this is a pen over here now the next thing we talk about is how we can actually move objects around Maya so to move objects around Maya we can use these tools over here uh, now don't worry if you see that some of these tools is a little bit different from Maya 2015 or 2017 or 2018 whichever Maya version you have they still do the same thing so for example over here this is my move tool all right or i can press press w on the keyboard and i can move my cube forward and backwards side to side and up and down now notice that whichever you have as the last axis that you move either up and down or side to side it will turn yellow all right so usually it's typically represented over here where Z is forward, Y is upward and X is towards the side. Okay, so that's how you can orient yourself within the 3D space. You can press E or you can just press this button over here to start to rotate your box around over here. Now you can actually rotate it by 90 degrees if you go to it over here on the right hand side and you can change this number here to minus 90 or 90 degrees. So you can rotate it at a specific number. And lastly, if you press R, you can scale your cube up. Or you can even scale it from this way and that way. Now, that's the difference if you scale it using the axis over here. Okay, it will make it wider or longer. Or if you scale it using the center square over here, this will scale it uniformly. All right, so that's the difference between scaling these things. So again, these are just the basics for you to have a refresher of what we did before. And we're going to continue with a few more basics and then after that we'll start on the alien tutorial. Alright, so the next part we're going to talk about is the shortcuts over here. As you can see, I have a few shortcuts that I've done that I usually use while I am modeling. Um, so what you can do is you can start to create your own shelf. Um, in order to do that, you can actually go to this gear icon over here and then you can see there's this thing called new shelf right, so from over there you can start to name your new shelf so maybe you call it uh, modeling or whatever it is press ok and you can see a modeling tab appears over here and here you can start to put in your shortcuts that you would typically use while you model your character or whatever you have over here um, so for starters, I would usually encourage everyone to have these three shortcuts. Um, first of it would be edit, delete by type, history. So to put it up here in the shelf, what you have to do is you press and hold control shift and then left click and you see that the history shortcut is up here on your shelf. Next thing I would want is my center pivot. So again, you press control shift, left click and also I want my freeze transformation up there so already I have these three shortcuts over here ready for me to use so 
for the freeze transformation if you see over here on the right I have these numbers over here um, they're all very funny very different numbers over here so if I want to zero them out all I have to do is press freeze transformation as you can see my manipulator over here goes back to the correct axis alright and over here everything is zero bed out so that's what the freeze transformation does so as we go along we we'll start to build our shelf over here now the next thing we're going to talk about which is the first tool that we use in Maya is how to actually move around the vertex right now you are on object mode over here and if you right click over the object you can right click over here you have to right click right over here on the object you can start to see there's some of these options that you can go to right so for starters we're going to talk about just these four faces vertex edge and object mode so like I say we're right now in object mode so you can actually try to go to edge and what edge does is actually is all the edges of your cube so as you can see here I'm if I left click and select I'm selecting all these edges over here if I press W or I use this move tool over here I can actually start to move my edges and I start to manipulate the shape of my cube alright so this is where we can start to model okay so as we go along um, this will be one of the things that you would use to start to manipulate and shape your object be it from a cylinder a cube whatever you have you you can start to manipulate your object from there now if you go right click you go back to vertex alright um, you can actually start to manipulate the vertex over here so this pink color dot that you see this is actually the vertices and you can actually start to move them around and it will change the shape of the object as well if you select two vertices like this you can actually just left click it will give you this uh, marquee tool I think it's called a marquee tool and then after that you can select one or two vertices at the same time and you can move them like that right alternatively if you have to select more than one vertice you can actually press and hold the shift button uh, you can see that my cursor has that plus sign over there coming up and just click on it and you can start to select extra vertices just press and hold shift and left click on the vertices that you want to select and you can actually start to move them as well if you have to deselect a vertices uh, you can just press and hold control as you can see a minus type of sign pops out over there and you click it it will deselect that vertex alright so it same goes for edges as well you have to deselect an edge press control you can deselect the edge lastly we'll talk about faces so faces is all these four sides over here so if you select a face and you move them out or move them in again you can use this to manipulate the shape of your 3d object all right so that's the first part over here now the next thing we talk about is how to actually extrude uh, one of the tools that we use is extrude um, for extrude the fastest way that I, I find is for you to just click a face and you press press and hold shift right click and then you see there's an extrude face over here so once you press that you see that the manipulator changed to this very funny icon you have a circle over here and you have your arrows with a square over there now this is a bit tricky you must first understand that Maya has created a second face right on top of this face over here and what you have to do is you actually have to pull it out alright um, you need to be very careful with this because sometimes we forgot to pull it out because you accidentally press somewhere else and you thought you did not extrude it and what happens is you select that face again and you extrude again and you actually have a third face and you would have a hidden face somewhere over here so as we go along modeling our character later on you need to take note of this now another thing is that we have another way of extruding it so if let's say I go ahead and extrude again I can actually click on this square over here from either one of these arrows and once I click that another square over here appears in the center now I can left click and drag that and you will scale that face to become smaller or bigger alright and then 
I can press G, G for Germany to repeat the last command. Now G is not a shortcut for you to extrude, it's actually a shortcut for you to repeat what was the last command that you use. So the last command I used was the extrude tool, so I just press G. And then it have already created a face for me, you can't see it yet until you pull it up. Alright, so it takes a bit of practice on how you can actually um, extrude some of these faces over here. So later on you will learn a few techniques where we can actually, for example, I want to push a face in over here. So I'll just extrude over here and I can click on this square icon over here. I scale it down and then I press G again and this time I push it in so you can have some depth going in here. Or if you want to push it out, you can also push it out over here. Alright. Now again, let's say I need to emphasize this. Once you do your extrusion, make sure that once you click the extrude face, pull it out. Right? If for example, if you forget to pull it out, let's say you accidentally click over here, and you thought you have not pulled this face out, and then you go in and extrude again, and you pull it out. It kind of looks fine over here, but actually you have a hidden face right over here. You have a hidden face right inside here, so if I were to press 3, you can start to see that inside here, there are hidden faces right over here. They are all hidden faces. So we don't want that to happen. Alright, so we need to make sure. You see, if I pull this vertex out, I have a hidden face over here. So again, please be careful when you extrude. Um, if, let's say, you need to control Z and Ctrl C is to go back to uh, the last thing that you did. You can press it a few times. Uh, make sure you go back to the original. All right, don't go back to where you have an extra face over here. Um, one more thing about the Ctrl Z, since we are in that topic, you can actually change your undo to infinite. Um, in order to do that, you go to Window, Settings and Preferences, and then you go to Preferences. And you look over here, let me just make this a bit bigger. You go to undo, alright, by default if you just install Maya, it will put here as finite and give you about 50. So that means you can undo only about 50 times, alright. So what you want to do is you put it as infinite, so you can have an infinite amount of time to undo it. Alright, and then just click save. So on the next part, we'll start to talk about some of the other tools that we use and some of the techniques before we actually start to do our alien model.